Well, welcome folks once again to Bliss Hill Victorian Tech. It's short, Victorian Piper. Now, today is going to be a very good day for me and hopefully something interesting for you guys. Uh, in that today, I'm going to be finally training still on the last engine we've got operational here at the minute. And that is, excuse the bright sunlight, Billy the Steam Roller. Now, if you'd have seen my tour of the town, you'd have seen Billy briefly being driven by one of the senior drivers. And I think I expressed my wish at the time that uh, I really, really wanted to get on it. So I did actually have a day um, at the weekend just gone, a day training on uh, the, the engine. Only I couldn't film at the time, it was all a bit rushed. Obviously I was learning from scratch, so I needed to be paying attention. So didn't get any videos. So I have had a day's training. Today's the second full day. Um, so it'll be mainly me today uh, driving the engine around town. So uh, hopefully I'll do the old sneaky trick of putting the phone in my waistcoat pocket and hopefully we'll get some sort of onboard footage as I drive around. But anyway, I've got the thing going. I've lit the fire. It's full of water, which obviously we need. So I'll spin the camera around and we'll give you a little bit of tour of the engine. And then, like I say, hopefully later we'll show you actually the engine running and hopefully me driving it. So give me a second, turn you around, we'll have a look. Okay then, let's take a look. So you can just about see uh, Billy in his shed there, so where we keep him overnight. Keeps him out of the elements. Um, also gives us a place to obviously get it fired up and that if the weather's bad, we're not going to get in too much of a, a sort of a state. So we'll have a look, but anyway, Billy, as you can see from the nameplate, was built by Wallace and Stevens in Basingstoke in 1903. Now, Billy started life, as did most of these small, and he is small, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Most of these uh, engines started life as um, road tractors. So, whereas Billy obviously here is a roller, they would have had wheels at the front. Excuse the forklift going past. And if you can just see, it's a little cramped in this shed, so it's hard to see, but there's a there's a wheel here and another wheel there. So we do actually have, I don't think these, these probably aren't the originals. And here's the main steering axle for it here as well. So we do have the original, well, like I say, what it would have been as a road tractor with wheels at the front. <clears throat> now it would have operated the same way now, you can probably see the bar here and a chain the chain runs through to a bar there and then you can see there's a pinion gear there so the way the steering works on these engines let me just come round so the wheel's here so you turn the wheel which turns the pinion which turns the bar which pulls on the chain, either on one, you know, winds it on one way or winds it off the other. Now, it's hard work, I've got to be honest, and I'm led to believe that from full lock to full lock is 80 turns of the handle. It's a lot of work. Um, and as I'm right-handed, and as you can see from there, the steering is on the left-hand side, I have to use my weak hands, so it's, uh, it's challenging. I expect you build the muscles up eventually. So anyway, as we come round the side here then, so obviously this main section you can see on the camera now, and there's the inspection hatch, that's the boiler. The smoke box is this end, just tucked under the, see the main steering column there. Uh, and so we can open that and clean it up, which I've done. Obviously chimney, venting at the minute. And then as we come across, that's the cylinder. Piston arrangement. If I just peer over, that's the main piston rod into the cylinder. Now, as you can tell, if I put my hand against it, it's really small. It's a tiny, tiny cylinder and piston. But if I tell you this engine weighs three tonnes, it shows just how much power there is in these small steam engines. You know, to think that that little piston there and cylinder 
can power a three tonne of machinery with a full boiler of water and a man on board. They're pretty impressive machines. Now just move it up to the top here. There's the whistle. It's <coughs> the valve arrangement. And that's a mechanical lubricator. So as the engine runs, it turns the lubricator. And then as the steam is drawn in, obviously a pressurized steam, uh, that draws some steam oil in with it and that lubricates the inside of the cylinder. On the top here for the various moving parts, we've got these boiler pots, so they're full of oil. And we've got the main bearings on this side, the eccentrics to drive the water pump. Again, they've all got their own oil pots. This is the clutch. So currently we're out of gear, the pinion there. So when we want to put it in gear, we move the bar across, that slides that to there, that position, and engages the drive wheel. And then obviously we can go forward. But it does mean we can run the engine out of gear. That way we can just demonstrate it. Or if I move over here, this is the mechanical uh, water pump. With the engine running, you need the engine running to run that pump so we can get water in that way. Well, the other way of getting water in is there's actually a steam injector. Now, injectors are obviously far more uh, efficient devices. I'll probably do a separate video on how they work because it's a bit difficult to explain just when you can't actually see the inner workings of it. But the injector uses steam and that forces the water in that way. That runs down through there. This here is the handbrake. So I think it's currently off. Yes, it is. So turn that all the way, quite a few turns. And again, you can't really see it. Let's see if we can see inside the wheel. Oh, yes, you can. Pushes, pushes this shoe against the inner rim, and that's on both of the wheels. So coming back up to the uh, driver's position. So like I say, steering on the left. This engages forward or reverse gear. So it's as simple as forward, reverse, neutral in the middle. That's the regulator and that opens up. You push that forward. Obviously that increase the, increases the amount of steam going into the cylinder. And obviously the further forward you push it, the faster you go. So very similar to a modern car in that respect. Accelerator, gears, steering, only slight difference is you haven't really got a brake. Now to stop this thing, let me move back a bit so you can see a bit more of it. Now to stop this thing in motion, there is a, a brake that works on the flywheel on the other side. However, it's very ineffective. Obviously these old machines, handbrake is here, and the flywheel, which is out of focus, there we go. And that basically pushes this shoe onto the flywheel. Now that's not going to stop three tons of engine careering down the street. So what we generally do is obviously we don't run it too quickly because there are members of the public about. So we don't want to do anything a bit too silly. But basically we'll just put it into reverse. We're at a low enough speed where putting it into reverse will just pretty much stop the engine dead. But you have to bear in mind, it will then start going backwards. So. It's always good to have a quick check over your shoulder and make sure there's nobody behind you. So just show you the last few things in here. So the water gauge level, you can just see that's half full, which is where we need it for firing. There's the pressure gauge. You can see the safety valve blows at 120 psi. Now, as I found last week, driving this at anything over 80 psi, it gets very, um, unruly shall we say the higher the pressure obviously the more power you've got but it does mean you've got a much smaller gap between having the regulator all the way back and nothing happening pushing it forward a tiny bit letting 120 pounds of pressure in and it basically just wanting to race away with itself like i say if i manage to get some footage um on board later you'll probably see what i mean um it tends to be there's a very small fine gap between off and full on so just while we're at the back here, a little bit of coal in a hopper at the back. And then the water tender is here. 
That's the hose for filling it up when you're out on the road. This is, as you can see from the number plate, this is road legal. We can take this out on the public highway. And where is it? Down at the bottom there. If I put my hand behind it, you might see it. The idea was in those days, you could drop that into a river, a stream, a canal, anything, and it will suck water up. And the, the ball with the holes in just stops any bigger bits of debris going up into the boiler. So there we go, that's pretty much it. One thing I did think I did fail to say actually, it's like I said, it started life as a steam tractor and he was converted to a roller in 1912. And it's believed that although there are a number of these Wallace and Stevens engines still around, these small three-ton tractors, uh, we think this is the only one that's actually survived as a roller, all the others we think were converted back to tractors. And that was the other thing, just before we disappear, we go. I need to get some more wooden coal on the fire. Is the reason why he's so small. So obviously traction engines at the time were huge, monstrous great things. You've probably seen them on the telly or at steam rallies. Um, people sometimes think Billy's a, a sort of scale replica. It's not the case. Now I can't remember the exact dates around it, but basically, if you remember the old rule, you might have again seen it on old films, you used to have to have a man with a red flag walking in front of these things. And that's because they were so big and ponderous, they basically took up the whole of the road. Now, I'll, again, I'll probably explain this better in another video, but the long and short of it is, an act was brought in uh, Parliament, which meant a vehicle had to be capable of a certain speed uh, it got what it did away with the man with the red flag walking in front, but there was a restriction on weight. It couldn't be any more than three tons. Um, cyclists were starting to become, uh, you know, far more of them. It was getting more popular. Still, a large amount of horses and also motor vehicles um, from the very late 1800s. So the laws were changed to try and get rid of the huge, big. Um, steam tractors and engines of that type off the road. They wanted, basically the government wanted steam to be on the rails, not on the road. So to get around the regulations, companies started building these much smaller, under three ton engines, dry weight, uh, and that got them um, on the road and doing work, obviously within the rules of the time. But anyway, we'll leave it there because I can see I've been uh, going on for a little while. Hopefully you found that interesting and it is a beautiful thing to look at even if you don't really listen to what I'm saying. But anyway, we'll get some footage of, like I say, me driving it later. That should be a bit more interesting. Okay, so we'll catch you soon. Right. Coming up again, you bugger.
fine. Yeah, it will do. I just. No, you don't need it. Come on. Come on. Gotcha.
Can do. Oh, yeah.